Welcome back, folks. In this video, we're going to be going over some basic steps and basic fundamental tips on doing a successful seal and flood coat. Let's get going, shall we? So we've got this really big oversized charcuterie board that we started off with using Upstart Epoxy's Deep Pour Epoxy to get this inch and a half uh, thick pour on all these different colors. We used some of the mica powders from Upstart Epoxy's Mica Pigment Pack and we came up with this really, really cool board. We got this other template from craftedelements.com and we were able to trace out this flame look here that really adds flair and a crisp contemporary look to this piece. Okay, folks, it's always important to make sure you have a good set of rubber gloves. I like to get mine at Harbor Freight. They're pretty cheap there and they're really good quality gloves. So anytime that you're doing a seal coat, the, a common rule of thumb is one ounce per square foot. I, I like using that formula. And then when you do the flood coat, the other uh, aspect of that is three ounces per square foot. That's an okay formula to use, but you, you go through so much product doing that. I like to try and save as much as I can. That way I'm not having to recycle resin after. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit it with 24 ounces. And this will be uh, a tentative flood coat or a tentative seal coat. So just depending how it goes. Sometimes you'll pour a flood coat slash seal coat that goes perfect. You don't have any bubbles. You won't get any flies that land in your coat and everything is just flawless. In that case, we'll call it a flood coat and we're done. But if you do have little bubbles that come up from these little areas or whatever, and you gotta go back and sand it and uh, do another coat, then well, we'll call it a seal coat. That's kind of how we do it here. And it works out perfect every time. So what I'm gonna do is I have some Upstart Epoxy resin here. I've got their tabletop. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put in a one-to-one -one ratio of the hardener and a one-to-one -one ratio of the uh, epoxy resin here. So we'll check it out on our measuring cup here. And we're just gonna go with this right here. We see that this is actually 28 ounces. So we'll do 14 ounces of part A and 14 ounces of part B. So let's go here first. We're gonna go ahead and go with the hardener first for this one. Get 14 ounces in there. there we go. Put our lid back on. Let's grab part A. We're gonna go up to 28 ounces. Now, I always like to, when I'm gonna do a seal coat or a flood coat, I don't like to use the drill. I like to mix with a stir stick. And the cool thing about Upstart Epoxy is that they provide you a perfect little stir stick that you can use to mix it up. And I'll explain to you the reason being. The reason being is that when you use a drill, you're gonna get a lot more air bubbles trapped in there. And you're gonna see that once you pour this. Now, I love to film all my flood coats, seal coats, deep pours, all that. And you don't want a bunch of bubbles messing up your coat, your flood coat, or the video when you're doing it. So I find that stirring it by hand with a provided stir stick works perfect. Let me show you something else, folks. You see this cloudiness in there? That's what you get when you first start stirring and mixing. The goal is to get that cloudiness out of there so that it looks a lot more translucent and clear. So once you see that that cloudiness is disappearing, you know that you're getting closer to finishing mixing. So let's just stir this up. And the slower that you stir, you're not letting out all those air bubbles. So as a result, you're gonna have less air bubbles when you do your pour. 
And that's gonna be the fun part coming up here in a minute. I always like to tell everybody to mix between two to three minutes, just to be sure. Even when you've got the cloudiness out, I still mix after just for good measure. You don't want any little areas or patches uh, that aren't blended well and don't combine. So I can see in here that I'm starting to, to mix out that cloudiness and I'm getting a little bit more see-through. Yeah, see, check this out. This is exactly how we know that our mixture has gone good. Our stirring has gone good. It's starting to see, we're able to see the bottom of the cup now. Remember in the beginning, we weren't able to. So let's just keep on mixing it up. Keep on stirring it up, making sure that part and that part A and that part B blend perfectly together. Now, by all means, you really don't need to use your hand, I mean, to mix if you don't want to. You can definitely, definitely use a drill with a uh, blending attachment, but we, like I said, we just like to do it for purposes of our video shoots. And it's less heat gun work afterwards. So let's get all this going, We're still mixed up. I'm probably going on about a good two and a half minutes here. I'm gonna give it another 20, 30 seconds and then I think we'll be square. Then it's time for you guys to enjoy this awesome show. How cool is that, folks? Isn't it cool to watch? You should see from this side. So what I like to do, once I have my resin poured on there, I like to chop these edges like this. You can do it with a hand, you can do it with a paintbrush, you can do it with a Bondo spreader, whatever you have to chop this area. But all this does is it makes sure that you kind of spread the epoxy out evenly. You can also use a square notch trowel for this too, or you can cut notches into your Bondo spreader, or your plastic spreader, whatever you're using to do that. And it disseminates the um, epoxy a little more evenly. But what I like to do is I like to put the majority of it in the middle and then work it out on the outside because the epoxy will self-level eventually. That's what you want. And you want it all to be level so that when it cures, it's all on one nice solid plain surface, leveled and easy to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Get this all padded up. Make sure we get these edges. You always wanna get your edges fruit too, folks. The cool thing about that is that the epoxy as it drips over, it helps you with sealing up those edges perfectly. Come in here and get all this detail. Let's get that going there. There we go. Now we have all this. All right, now it's time to, to take off our gloves because we're not going to need them, and if we do, we'll get another set. Now, we're going to come and get our trusty heat gun here, and we're going to extinguish some of these bubbles that we have from the padding and from the pouring. And let's go ahead and get all these out. Now, you can go with a super fast fan like that but if you have debris around and stuff you don't want to risk blowing that debris back up on your board or your table or whatever you're working on so I like to go in a lower a lower fan mode a lower level so now you just hit the lid make sure we get all those bubbles out get those all 
Folks, we've got everything sealed up. We got everything poured up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it 24 hours to cure, but we're still gonna go ahead and keep monitoring it just to make sure there's no debris that falls in there. There's no flies or anything like that that gets in there. Now, if you wanna cover your projects, you can definitely cover them, folks. I find that it's easier just to monitor mine and don't disturb the room. I'll come in here probably in an hour and make sure, real quietly, make sure and softly to not disrupt any debris or anything and just make sure that nothing has fallen on the table and that everything's curing fine. There's no bubbles that are coming up from the wood or anything like that. If that's the case, I'll hit it with the heat gun a little bit more. So let's give it a 24-hour uh, period and we'll come back and we'll check it out tomorrow, folks, and let's see what we got to do. This has been Steve with Upstart. We'll see you in a while. Well, folks, we're back. It's the next day. It's been 24 hours, and we noticed that this is going to have to be a seal coat. Our flood coat expectations fell through, but hey, it makes it that much more perfect every time. You'll see these little imperfections and these little dents. They're just little air pockets that what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get a little hand sander like this. We're going to get some 120 grit, and we're just going to sand over these little areas to make sure that we sand those out and that we create a mechanical bond. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sand over these areas. We're actually gonna sand the whole board just to scuff it up a little bit. And like I said, create that mechanical bond so that it brings all these imperfections to the surface, shows us where the little dimples are. That way when we refill it with our flood coat, we know exactly what we're getting and what we're gonna fill, folks. You wanna go over the whole thing Make sure you got a good even epoxy film on there. Scuff film, I like to call it. Cover all these little areas here. Just get it nice and sanded out smooth. And that's what we want. Now, put that down. What we're gonna do is, next what we'll do is we'll give our paper towel roll and I like to get the roll itself and just kind of wipe off the surface dust on here. Just a little bit of the surface dust here just to get rid of some of this tension that's here from scraping this epoxy. Okay, we'll get all this, get that out of there for the most part. Tear off a couple of these sheets of the paper towel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit it with our alcohol again. Alcohol is good for removing dust, folks. And that's what we wanna do. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe all that dust off, folks. You wanna get the edges, you wanna get all over the whole piece. That way you don't have any of those specks of resin that you just sanded stuck to the sides or anything. Like I said, dust and alcohol don't go well together. So it's always good if you ever wanna remove dust from your piece, always spray a little alcohol and I use 70 to 90 isopropyl alcohol. Just depends. Whichever one you can get your hands on. And there we go. Now we're ready to give it another coat. Hopefully this will be our last coat. In most cases though, when you have real serious pitting or you have real serious imperfections like that, you may have to give it two, um, two seal coats. Um, and in some cases, if it's pretty, pretty smooth, and it's all ready to roll, you only gotta give it one seal coat and one flood coat. That's what we're shooting for on this one, folks. Let's go ahead and slip these gloves on here. And we're gonna see how much we can do out of this. We're not gonna need too much because it's got that first layer on there. So let's see if we can get 24 ounces out. There's 12, part A, let's get part B, and let's go up to 24. And now let's come from the middle here, and let's get all this again. Go from the middle on this side, and then we're gonna just let it disseminate evenly across the whole piece here. We're gonna pat 
pat down this area like we showed you before to kind of help the epoxy move a little faster, catch those edges before it really, really starts dripping over the sides. That way the majority of it stays in the middle and the flow is evenly disseminated to the sides and the corners. It's also a good idea to just coat your sides with your gloves. Make sure you help the resin move along accordingly. Put it on level one so we're not spraying around any degree, debris in case there's any around here. And let's go ahead, fill in these cracks like we said. And look at that, it's starting to look good, folks. We want this thing to look like a sheet of glass when it's all set and done. those colors really came together really well on this board. I'm really liking the way they tie in together. And there you go folks, you see how that looks like one solid continuous sheet of glass or sheet of ice. That's the look you're going for when you want to do a flood coat folks. You don't want any little dimples, you don't want any little hairs, you don't want any imperfections or flaws in your flood coat. You want it crisp, clean, concise, and most importantly, consistent. Folks, this was coat number two. Hopefully it's our last coat, but if it's not, if you're doing this at home and you see that there's little imperfections or little bubbles or flaws, it's okay to give it another coat, folks. Sometimes it takes three coats, sometimes you're lucky and it only takes one. So we're gonna leave this be, we're gonna leave the room, leave it undisturbed so that nothing bothers it. And we'll check it in a little while occasionally. Other than that, we'll see how it goes in the morning and we'll go from there. Welcome back folks. So it's another day. Our piece cured to perfection, just like we wanted to. A clean slate of glass, it looks just like that. So now what we did is we went ahead and we took it outside and we sanded off all the drips and all the bubbles from our flood coat and our seal coat. Now I went ahead and I sanded it up. I started at 80 grit and I went all the way up to 220 grit folks. And we're gonna go ahead and sand, uh, put some oil on this. Uh, we're gonna use walrus oil today but you can always use Odie's oil, you can use Osmo, you can use any oil that you want. So we just wanna make this piece look more complete and more finished, and that's what we're gonna do. Check out how cool this looks. Walrus oil, you don't really need too much. A little bit goes a long way. So all you do is you put it on, you go ahead and squirt some on your piece here, and then you're gonna rub it in and get it into the wood. Now, the reason I only go up to 180 is, is because the epoxy is not going to absorb the walrus oil, but the wood will. So the higher grit that you use, you're going to lessen the effect of the oil going into the wood. The wood has a lot of fibers and grains and all that that soaks up the uh, oil that you put in there. And if you sand it too high of a grit, the, um, the oil won't soak in and absorb as much because it's so smooth. So you want to leave it not real coarse, but you want to leave it at least a little bit so that it can drink up that oil and you won't run into any problems. Just get this area here with the wood and you can see this was really thirsty, this wood. It's soaking it all up. But you'll notice if you look on the epoxy, it's not doing it too much. See, it's still real real you can slide your hand around and it's still real movable but as you get to the wood you can tell that it's really really drinking it up let's get that all rubbed on we'll let this go ahead and cure for about 
I like to let it go for about 12 hours, eight to 12 hours. Then what I'll do is I'll come back with a uh, terry cloth and I'll wipe it all off, what's left, and you're all done. That's it, folks. Okay, it's been eight hours. We came back to our piece and you can see that the uh, walrus oil is still kind of absorbing into the epoxy. It's never gonna absorb into there, folks. It's epoxy. But the wood has taken it in and drank it really, really good. So I'm just gonna get this cloth and wipe off any excess that's on there. It's actually a paper towel. You can use a paper towel, you can use a terry cloth, you can use whatever your heart desires. Just nothing too abrasive that could scratch your product. I just say it's better to stick with a good old paper towel, folks. And that's it. Look at how beautiful that turned out. And that's the backside, folks. And look how beautiful this turned out, folks. This has just been a really big joy to work with. It was a fun piece, a fun project, a really fun pour. And the end result is something that you too can do. We're here to help you upstart epoxy. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below in the comment section. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel too. And you, one day, can be making cool and beautiful stuff just like this, folks. Once again, this has been Steve with Upstart, and we'll see you next time.